Good morning, welcome to another NITMED tutorials and today we're going to do a relatively simple and short topic ABO incompatibility So, ABO incompatibility is a part of the hemolytic disease of newborn Hemolytic disease of newborn also includes restless incompatibility Okay, now let's go back every body on the red blood cell surface has specific antigens now based on the type of antigen you have it could either be blood group a in which you have antigen a on top blood group b in which you have antigen b on top blood group o in which there are no antigens and then a b in which we have both a and b antigens now those with blood group a have antibodies to blood group b because it has been seen that some of the food we eat have these particular antigens so some of the food we eat contains antigen b antigen a so when we eat them they get the proteins get absorbed into the blood the body sees them as foreign objects and begins to produce antibodies so normally even if you've not had transfusion before you already have antibodies to other blood groups other than yours so blood group a has antibody to b blood group b has antibody to a Blood group O has antibody to both A and B, and then blood group AB has no antibody because it contains both what antigen. So, what is hemolytic disease of the newborn? It is destruction of the fetal red blood cell by antibodies produced by the mother. Simple. Now, we have various types of antibodies. We have antibody A, we have antibody G, that's immunoglobulin G, immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin M, immunoglobulin D, and immunoglobulin E. Immunoglobulin E is responsible for type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, that's anaphylaxis and asthma. Immunoglobulin D, the exact reason or its exact use is not known, but it is found on the cell surface of um, B lymphocytes. Immunoglobulin M is antibody that is pentameric, that has 5 units. And it is secreted and also it helps in activating the complement system each FC fragments have complement activating systems that creates the complement system that causes cell lysis immunoglobulin G can help in phagocytosis can also activate complement system immunoglobulin A is also called the mucosa antibody all right now of all of them immunoglobulin G is the only one that's capable of what crossing the blood placenta barrier Okay, it's one that crosses the blood placenta barrier. So this is the summary of what I'm saying. So you can see that those that have blood group A have antigen A and antibody B. Those that have blood group B have anti antigen B and antibody A. Those that have blood group A B have both antigen A and antigen B. You can see antigen A are these red, are these purple circles. Antigen B are these kite-shaped green things. So AB has both the purple circle and the kite shaped green substance. Alright. Now O has no antibody. And those with blood group O have IgM to anti A and anti B and also IgG. So we have IgM to anti A and anti B and also IgG. While those with blood group A or B have only IgM, meaning that those with blood group A or B will not be able to produce antibodies that will cross the placenta while those with blood group O has IgM which cannot cross the placenta but also has IgG that's capable of crossing the placenta so with this you will know that hemolytic disease of newborn involving ABO incompatibility can only occur in mothers that have blood group O so what happens maternal IgG is produced by plasma cells crosses the placenta barrier to the child now within the child it binds to the child's hemoglobin binds to the child's red blood cell surface and what still happens when anti antibody IgG binds to the red blood cell surface the FC fragments one could either activate the complement system or two cause opsonization and then it to be engulfed and eaten by what splenic macrophages so in this case now it's going to be the splenic and hepatic macrophages that will eat the red blood cell. When you eat the red blood cell, you will go what? Hemolysis. Right? Hemolysis 
the red blood cell is broken down the hemoglobin is broken down into its ion components its protein components and the hem structure the hem is then converted to biliverdine and from biliverdine to bilirubin so we have unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia so fetal rbc plus maternal igg which cross the placenta barrier will then bind together leading to hemolysis because the fetal macrophages are the ones that are going to engulf the warts rbc that has been coated with antibody when that occurs there's going to be rbc destruction causing anemia one and also the hemoglobin is going to be broken down to bilirubin giving us unconjugated bilirubin which will cause jaundice and the bilirubin level is very high to give us what kenic terrors now the anemia can cause high output cardiac failure which then give us high drops fetalis or the anemia can stimulate erythropoiesis by usually organs like the liver and kidney, giving, giving us what hepatosplenomegaly. So there are two things that cause hepatosplenomegaly. One of them is the extramedullary hemopoiesis, erythropoiesis. Secondly, it is the what destruction by the splenic and hepatic what, macrophage system. So hemolytic anemia usually has a triad: jaundice, anemia, and hepatosplenomegaly. So when you see this triad, jaundice, anemia, and hepatosplenomegaly, you should think of hemolytic anemia. So ABO is the most common form of blood group incompatibility. Like I said before, it is when the mother is blood group O. She then produces IgG against antigen A and antigen B and crosses the blood placenta barrier and then cause problem. Now usually the anemia caused by ABO incompatibility is usually mild and requires no treatment because the liver and other organs also express this a antigen b antigen causing what expresses the a antigen and b antigen so the antibodies produced against this antigen not all of them will bind to rbc some of them will go and bind to the other organs making the hemolysis usually not as severe as now at test in the more that you want to do abo and archers grouping you want to estimate the amount of ig g anti e and anti b and you also want to do tests for antibody dependent cell matrix and toxicity for infants, you want to do the same thing. You want to do a direct Combs test, which lets us know if there is ongoing hemolysis. Reticulocytes count. Reticulocytes are young, fresh RBCs. They share the results of the bone marrow. Because once there is anemia due to hemolysis, the bone marrow compensates. Okay? We're going to be right in blue ribbon, especially the unconjugated blue ribbon. So we find the anemia. Lactase like dehydrogenase is also going to be elevated. So this is the Kramer index and you should simulate the severity of the neonatal jaundice. Okay, so when it's mostly in the face, that's grade one and it's five milli percent of um bilirubin rise in the blood. When it's the chest, it's about 10 milligram. When it's the abdomen, about 12, hands and feet, 15, and then when it involves the palms and so greater than 15 milligram. Okay. You should observe the baby in light, natural bright light. Check the baby's sclera, gums, and blanched skin is used to assess the severity of the neonatal jaundice. So this is the Krama index. Now they are just descending your counting the scores. Because the face is one, two, when is the chest, two, meaning that's 10 milligrams of bilirubin levels. The extremities, 15, abdomen, 12, arms and soles, 15. Remember that 15. So the difference between A, B, and Restless disease. Usually, even without checking the cell, Usually, ABO can occur in the first pregnancy. Restless usually occurs in the second pregnancy after the mother has been exposed to the fetal words antigen. Okay, so mother will be racist negative. A racist incompatibility, while in ABO should be blood group O, the infant will be racist positive, while the infant will be either A or B or AB. Racist doesn't occur often in the firstborn, about 5%. ABO occurs often in the first child. So what this means is that racist rarely occurs in the first pregnancy as opposed to ABO which can occur in the first pregnancy. Still breath and high drops and severe anemia are more common in what racist incompatibility while ABO they are what rare. Direct anti Globulin test can be positive for both of them. Serocytes is not seen. Resource incompatibility might be seen in ABO. 
Ancient translation is often required in order to some compatibility because of the level of anemia and jaundice that is done. Maybe it's infrequent, but the therapy might be useful to all. This is phototherapy. You expose the child to a light phototherapy. You expose the child to a light waves of certain wavelengths that helps in converting uncongenital bilirubin to a form that can be easily excreted. All right. And the actual transmission, whole blood. Usually, I'm to give leukocyte depleted because the newborns don't have enough immune system that is mature. So that prevents graft as well as host disease. You give a leukocyte depleted, which could either be a radiated WBC. Thank you very much. See you next time.